everyone, and welcome to Employee Experience Academy. I'm Samantha Kenny, today's host, and I am joined by Sherry Kotman, the Chief People Officer at Forrester. Welcome so much, Sherry. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Looking of forward to course. it. So, Sherry, you've been very vocal about employee wellness and how employees are really looking for employers to meet both their emotional as well as their professional needs. And you've spoken about social reform, changing expectations in the workplace, and you most recently published an article about work-life balance um, in the Power of Fences, which was just published on the Forrester blog. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that topic and why you believe it's a critical part of employee wellness today. Yeah, so I am so glad to have this conversation. It's something I've been wrestling with in my in my role and maybe just as an employee myself, but also as I think about what are we trying to create here right now? This moment of disruption, things are broken open a little bit. There's a rawness in our kind of um, personal lives that you know is really not contained to our personal lives that exists in our professional lives. And so I've been asking myself, what is the role of our company in the emotional lives of our employees? It's a very specific question. And there's all, we've been through a lot together. And I think there's um, real burden and beauty in that. But yet, as you start to come back together, I think if we're not careful or intentional, companies can end up in spaces and people's lives that I think are unhealthy. And so when I think about well being, I think about, you know, what does inclusion mean? When I think about well being, when I think about emotional health, um, health of teams, I actually started to feel like there should be boundaries. And it, it caused me to reflect on a study actually that I read a long time ago and I, I dug it up recently. And it's a study that um, done of children and children who play on playgrounds that either are um, fenced in or not. And for the students that play in an unfenced playground, they play very close to the teacher. Students that play in a fenced-in playground play throughout the entire space. And to me, that's just such a critical, it's like it hits me right in, at my core because it says when we have boundaries, when we know that there's an edge to where our relationship should go, we know how far we can safely go together. And companies, I think, are trying so hard to fill a leadership void right now. And employees are desperate for leadership and guidance in ways they haven't been before. And I think if we don't start to get square about what is our role to help people become great professionals and great human beings, and where do we not belong, that is, um, I think, a really big miss. And so there were two ways that I, when I was thinking about Forrester, when we're doing our inclusion work and things like that, what are the two fences, the power of these fences? What are at least two sides of that fence? And the first side is knowing that you're taking control and ownership of your own worth, that your identity is not found in your work, in your title or your performance rating. And that sounds great to say, but I think to live that out, how you treat people, given you know um, how you model your own sense of identity as a leader. I know I've had unhealthy times where I get some tough feedback and it, it floors me for weeks. It floors me as a mother. It floors me as a friend or a wife, not just a professional. And that is a signal that says I am letting my work govern my identity and my value in ways I never should. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of step one. And then the second you know, piece of that is also not a new concept. It's, it's we're a team, not a family. And I worry that is there's great research from HBR ages, you know, 2016, 17, probably even before that, that talks about the importance of that distinction. But now, because all of the things we're processing together are more intimate, they legitimately are. And so it's really easy to get to a place where people can feel like my team is my family. And I just cringe when I hear that, because that is setting us up to create a reduced form of family, I think, and not as healthy of teams as we need. And the purpose of a team and the purpose of a family are different. Family is unconditional love built around, you know, a lasting, a lasting season. And a team is built around the skills and capabilities of human beings against a shared goal for a period of time. You put those two things next to each other, they are not the same. And one can't meet the need of another. One can't pretend to be another. So I just feel like those two things, when I think of well-being, there's so many layers on top of that. But at the root, when I'm in my healthiest place, I have those two, two things very square in my head. And I, I encourage leaders to think the same way and reflect 
you know, and lead the same way. I could sit here and talk to you about this all day <laughs> long. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I, I'm sure you could. I'm I I feel like um I feel like we have just scratched the surface. I feel like we could do a whole like workshop, Series. three day workshop yeah. just on this one right. topic. Or at least um, a good cup of coffee, right? <laughs> oh yes, absolutely. Right. And it it's so refreshing. It's it's so nice to to talk to other people. Um, one of the big good things about Employee Experience Academy is every topic that we we talk about is so passionate for the person yeah. who we're interviewing. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I can feel that come across mm -hmm. for you. And I, yeah. I just appreciate so much for you. Yeah. Just kind of, I mean, at least I, what I'm hoping is that at least this will start uh, some, some thought processes for people, maybe think through it a little bit more. Uh, and it's just, it's so great. Um, and uh, like I said, thank you so much for yeah. joining us. I, I really hope we have the opportunity to speak with you again. It's been good. Me too. Pleasure, Samantha. It's a journey. This is not a one and done thing. We're all going to be wrestling with all sorts of things for a while. So I'm sure we'll cross paths again. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much, Sherry. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you.